for my being here on tonight. I certainly give honor and deference to the set man of this house. Can you help me to celebrate the pastor? Amen. Pastor Thagger. Amen. God bless you. Oh, we can do a little bit better than that. Come on, celebrate the man of God. Certainly honor the Lord for him on tonight and extending this invitation. I bless the Lord for you. Certainly give honor and deference. Amen. My superintendent. Amen. Of the number one district. The number one, y'all. Amen. Thank God for Superintendent Clyde on tonight. And I certainly give honor and deference. Amen. To our state evangelist, Prophet Friday on tonight. Amen. Thank God for all of the men of God. Thank God for Elder Thaggart. Again, God bless you on tonight. We certainly thank God for the first lady of this house. Lady Denise Thaggart. Amen. Thank God for her. Thank God for our district missionary. Y'all, I feel special. We got our district missionary and our district superintendent. I just don't know what to do with myself tonight. Y'all making me a little nervous. Amen. But I thank God for her on tonight. Amen. Thank God for our Sunday school field rep. Amen. Mother Thaggart on tonight. Let me interrupt you. God bless you. To my own mother. Amen. I thank God for her on tonight. Amen. She's, amen. Hadn't been able to really go a whole lot with me, but I thank God that she's here on yeah, tonight and that yeah. God is continuing to give her strength. Yeah. And I bless the Lord for her. And my granny, as I always call her, amen. God bless you on tonight. Yeah. My granny, amen. And Elder Booth, amen. I must say, this young man, amen, is a sweet young man, and he travels far and near. Yeah. Amen. And that says a lot. Amen. For someone to travel all the way from college just to see about you. Amen. And I thank God that for most of the services, he and those from college, they always find their, their way to the services. And I promise you, I do not take that lightly. I thank God for them. Amen. Being with us on tonight and a portion of my family here. Thank God for them on tonight. And all of you. God's children. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. But I thank God for everybody who is under the sound of my voice. I believe that got everybody. All of you, God's children. Let's go to the word of the Lord on tonight. We're going to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. Familiar passage of scripture. 2 Corinthians 4 8. Nine, then we're going to skip down to 17. And the word of the Lord reads, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Just for a thought on tonight, your affliction is just for a moment. It's just for a season. Tell somebody whatever you're going through. It's just for a season. Talk back to me again. We're going to like a talk back church. Thank God. Amen for Mother Boxdale. Hallelujah. But it's only for a season. Is there anybody here that knows what it's like to be in a season where you're questioning God? Because there are some things that's bigger than our understanding. Some events that's bigger than our comprehension. And every now and then you end up in a place in your life where you have to stop and ask God, Lord, where are you? But I need you to understand that in this life, you will go through many things along the way. There are some things that you will have to suffer while you're on this Christian journey. And yes, there are some things that we may never understand. But I've come to tell somebody that the Lord won't put more on you than you're able to bear. And the God that we serve is well able to bring you through. And I found out that a lot of times we allow the enemy to sidetrack us and get our focus off of God when what he has permission for us to do. 
But in this time and season, we're going to have to seek God like never before. I told the church on Sunday that the body of Christ is going through as a whole. We're going through major transitions. But with the help of the Lord, we're going to make it. And for those of you who will be steadfast, unmovable, for those who will sacrifice and turn your place down, God is going to work miraculously in your life. Yes, you may be faced with some things, but God is going to bless you in the midst of what's going on around you. How many of you know that in spite of where you are, God will show up on time? Can I pause right here and let you know that we serve an on-time God? I'm going to find a church somewhere. I believe that in this season, that God not only wants to bless you, but he wants to bless me. He wants to set us up in a place where men and women have counted us out. They have left you for dead. But look around and say, surely the Lord is on their side. Somebody up in here tonight can identify that there have been some people who have voted and counted you out. They've left you for dead. They didn't want you to live. They didn't want you to make it. But God says, no, I've chosen this one. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know that Jesus has selected you? Sometimes people will shut the door in your face and say that there's nothing to you and that you will never be anything. Oh, but thanks be to God. Yes, it came to pass so that we might learn 
experiences. You have to understand that he's preparing you. That's why you're going through what you're going through. Because he's preparing you. But I've come to talk to somebody tonight who is saying, I know that God has something more for me than what I'm seeing right now. I know that God has something better. Is there anybody in here that knows that God has something better concerning you? Just shout better. Better, better, better. Yes, God has something better than what you're seeing right now. I know, I know, I know that some of you tonight have been spiritually and emotionally depleted. Depleted in other areas of your life. And you can't seem to understand what God has allowed you to be in this particular season. And what you're going through has blindsided you. Blindsided means hit. To be hit unprepared. And sometimes things will happen in your life that you didn't see coming. Some things will catch you off guard. But the truth of the matter is that there are times in your life that you will have a hard time coming to grip with what God does. Every believer at some point will face a time in their lives where you have to be determined to stand with God, even though you don't agree with the process. But we must learn to accept what God allows. It's challenging now when you trust God, but you don't like the process. The process now, the process is difficult. The process is what you have to go through to perfect what God is doing down in you. So the question becomes, how do we remain rooted in faith when you're facing situations that have knocked you off your feet? You see, anybody can sing songs of victory when the sun is shining. It's easy to give God glory when all is going well in your life. Ah, what do you do when trouble rise and you are experiencing some dark days in your life? Listen, we must understand God's permissible will versus God's perfect will. In other words, God's allowed versus God's assigned. So here we are. We're in a place trying to understand God's placement and God's process. And the question now becomes, how do we understand, how do we stand when we are struggling with God's decisions concerning us? What do you do when something catches you off guard? What do you do when it feels like that life has handed you a bad hand? I believe if we are truthful tonight, I have at least one witness who will say, I know what it's like to experience a moment that knocks you off your feet and knocks you off without warning. I believe that there's somebody here tonight who knows what it's like to be blindsided by life, blindsided by sickness, heartache and pain, rejection, family dysfunction, and yes, blindsided by a sudden death. No, 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 you didn't see it coming. It happened without warning. And there are some things that will happen in your life that will shake you to your very core. You see, I found out that life can seem to be unfair at times because one minute you can be doing well and the very next moment all hell can break loose. Somebody knows what it's like to be doing well one day and hit with the spirit of infirmity the next. Life is not easy and I believe somebody in here can testify that sometimes it looks like that things are going well but when you turn around you're blindsided by the pressures of life. You're hit and young one knows, someone knows what it's like to be hit. And your entire life changes, blindsided, because you've lost a child or parent, lost a spouse unprepared, blindsided. When the doctor gave you that diagnosis, 
diagnosis. You were hit without warning. Yes, you've been hit. Hit without warning. Hit by folk you thought were truly for you. Hit by sabotages. Hit by things happening on your job. Hit by things happening in your home. Hit by unforeseen expenses. Hit by things that are happening suddenly in your life. You've been hit and you're wondering where will this song come to an end? So how do I hold on to my faith when I'm in a bad situation? When I'm positioning something that feels like nowhere and somewhere all at the same time. When I'm stuck between where I am and what I believe. When I'm positioned between where God has me and where God has promised me. Is there anybody here that knows what it's like to be in something that seems so desolate but yet so purposeful? What do you do when you've been hit unprepared by the decision of your God? What do you do when you've been hit and you're dealing with things that is God ordained? How do you respond when you're trying to understand why the God that loves you so much will allow you to walk through a dark season, blind seasons, hurtful seasons, isolated seasons, desolate seasons? How do I come to grips with what's going on in my life? But sometimes God will take you through some dark seasons just so he can strengthen you. So every now and then, he has to shake up some things in your life just so he can show you that he is God. And I've come to tell somebody that your affliction is just for a moment and it won't be this way always. Can I tell you that sometimes in life you will just go through because God wants to use you to make his works manifested in your life. Tell your neighbor, I know you're uncomfortable, but God wants to get the glory out of your life. I know it doesn't look good. I know it doesn't feel good. I know you're weary. I know you're tired, but God wants to get the glory out of your life. And sometimes while we're in this place of suffering, we get lost in the way because Yeah. <laughs> 
coming through. God wants the glory. Out of your life. He might not shut the door. God wants the glory. the glory, your affliction, your trial, your test, the things that you're faced with, the thing that you're dealing with, is only for a season. Oh, somebody will catch that. Thank <laughs> you. 